Hello everyone. In today's video, we are going to talk about best 50 help desk and desktop support interview questions with ChatGPT answers. Myself, Mohammad Zubair, and this channel is all about showing you how to become a highly paid IT pro really fast. So basically in this video, we'll take 50 questions that are expected in a help desk interview and we'll see their answers from the chat GPT. Basically the answer that you will see in this video for each question will be from chat GPT and we have asked this question from the chat GPT and it gave us some answers. At the end of this video, we'll have a sneak peek at the chat GPT to confirm that all the answers for this video are taken from the chat GPT. So for the sake of this video, we'll try to keep the answers short. So let's start. Number one, what is the role of a help desk technician? A help desk technician provides technical support to users, troubleshoots, issues, and resolve problems related to computer hardware, software, and network. Number two, how would you handle a user who is unable to access their email? Well, I would check if the user's credentials are correct and then troubleshoot the email client or web mail service to identify and resolve any configuration or connectivity issues. Number three, what steps would you take to diagnose a slow internet connection issue? Well, I would start by checking the physical connection, then run a speed test, and then verify if the issue is localized to the user's device or network wide. Further troubleshooting would depend on the specific symptoms and environment. Number four, how would you assist a user who forgot their password? I would guide the user through a password reset process which may involve security questions, email verification, or utilizing a password reset tool provided by the organization. Number five, how do you prioritize multiple support tickets with varying levels of urgency? Well, I would prioritize tickets based on urgency, impact on business operations, and predefined service level agreement. Critical issues affecting many users or significant business function would take precedence over minor or individual issues. Number six, what are the common causes of computer freezing or crashing? Well, common causes include software conflicts, outdated drivers, insufficient system resources, hardware issues such as overheating of faulty RAM, or malware infections. Number seven, how would you assist a user who is unable to print a document? Well, I would begin by checking the printer's connection, ensuring it has paper and ink, and confirming it that it is set as a default printer. If necessary, I would troubleshoot printer drivers, restart print spooler services, or address network connectivity problems. Number eight, what steps would you take to troubleshoot a user reporting no sound from their computer speakers? Well, I would first check if the speakers are properly connected and powered on. Then I would verify audio settings, ensure the correct playback device is selected and troubleshoot sound drivers or audio software issues if necessary. Number nine, how would you handle a user who has accidentally deleted an important file? Well, I would assess if the file is backed up or recoverable from the backup system. If not, I would utilize data recovery software or consult with specialists to attempt file restoration. Emphasizing the importance of regular backups would be crucial. Number 10. How would you address a user who is experiencing frequent email spam? Well, I would ensure the user's email client or service has proper spam filter enabled. Additionally, educating the user on safe email practices, avoiding suspicious links or attachments, and making spam messages as such can help minimize future occurrences. Number 11. A user reports that their computer displays a no bootable device error. How would you troubleshoot this issue? Well, I would start by checking if any removable media like USB are connected and remove them. Then I would verify the boot order in the BIOS setting, ensure the hard drive is detected, and troubleshoot any potential hard drive failures or corrupted boot sectors. Number 12. What steps would you take to troubleshoot network connectivity issues for a user who cannot connect to the internet? Well, I would begin by checking if other devices on the same network can access the internet. If the problem is isolated to the user's device, I would diagnose the network adapter, TCP IP settings, DNS resolution, and firewall configuration to identify and resolve the connectivity issues. Number 13. How would you handle a user who reports frequent application crashes? Well, I would investigate if the crashes are specific to the particular application or occur across multiple programs. I would check for available software update, reinstall the application if necessary, and analyze event logs or error messages to pinpoint the root cause, potentially involving software developers or vendors. Number 14. A user complains of slow computer performance. What steps would you take to diagnose and improve system speed? Well, I would begin by checking resource usage, 
through the task manager and terminating unnecessary processes. Then I would scan for malware, clean up temporary files, optimize starter programs, and consider hardware upgrades if the system meets the minimum requirements for the desired task. Number 15. How would you handle a user who is frustrated and angry due to technical issues? Well, I would listen actively, emphasize with their frustration, and assure them that I'm there to help. Remaining calm, patient, and professional, I would provide clear explanation, reassurance, and regular updates on the progress towards resolving the issue. Number 16. How would you handle a user who is experiencing a repeated technical issue despite previous attempt to resolve it? Well, I would review the user's previous support history, identify any patterns or recurring factors, and escalate the issues to higher level support or specialized teams if necessary. Collaboration and knowledge sharing with colleagues can help find a resolution for persistent issues. Number 17. Describe a time when you had to deal with an irritate or difficult customer. How did you handle the issue? In such situation, I remain calm, listen actively, and emphasize with the customer's frustration. I focus on understanding their concern, offering reassurance, and working collaboratively to find a solution. Patience, effective communications, and maintaining a professional demeanor are essential. Number 18. How do you stay updated with the latest technology trends and advancement in IT industry? Well, I stay updated by regularly reading technology blogs, following industry publications, attending webinars or conferences, and participating in relevant online communication. Engaging in professional development opportunities and obtaining relevant certification also help me to stay current with industry trends. Number 19. How would you prioritize your workload when faced with multiple urgent support tickets simultaneously? Well, I would evaluate the impact and urgency of each ticket, considering factors such as criticality, number of affected users, and predefined service level agreement. By prioritizing based on these criteria, I can assure that the most Pressing issues are addressed promptly while managing the workload effectively. Number 20. Describe your approach to documenting and maintaining knowledge base articles or support documentation. While there should be clear, concise, and easily understandable documentation, I would document troubleshooting steps, solutions, and best practices in a structured manner, incorporating user friendly language and relevant screenshots. Regular review and update keep the knowledge base current and essential for providing accurate and helpful information. Number 21. A user reports that their computer is displaying a blue screen with an error message. How would you troubleshoot this issue? Well, I would note the error message and any accompanying error codes, then reboot the computer and check for recent hardware or software changes. I would also update drivers, scan for malware, and run diagnostic tests to identify and resolve any hardware or software conflicts. Number 22. How would you assist a user who is unable to connect to a wireless network? Well, I would first check if other devices can connect to the network to determine if it's a device-specific issue. I would troubleshoot the wireless adapter, verify SSID and password setting, reset the network stack, and ensure that MAC address filtering or firewall rules are not blocking the connection. Number 23. What steps would you take to troubleshoot email synchronization issues on a mobile device? I would verify the device internet connectivity, ensure correct email server settings, and check if the account has sufficient storage capacity. I would also troubleshoot synchronization settings, clear cache, and data, and verify if any third-party apps or security software are interfering with email synchronization. Number 24. How would you handle a user who receives frequent phishing emails and is concerned about security? While I would educate the user on identifying the phishing emails, advising them to avoid clicking on suspicious link or sharing personal information. I would also recommend regularly updating antivirus softwares, enabling two-factor authentication, and reporting phishing emails to the appropriate security teams. Number 25. A user reports that their computer is displaying low disk space warning. How would you address this issue? Well, I would check the disk usage and identify which files or programs are consuming excessive space. I would recommend deleting unnecessary files, emptying the recycle bin, running disk cleanup tools, and potentially moving data to an external storage device, or expanding the disk's capacity if needed. Number 26. Explain the concept of IP addressing and its importance in computer networks. IP addressing is a numerical label assigned to each device connected to a network. It enables devices to identify and communicate with each other across the network. IP addressing is crucial for routing data packets and ensuring proper network connectivity. 
Number 27. What is Active Directory? Active Directory is a directory service provided by the Microsoft for managing user accounts, computers, and other network resources in a Windows domain. It centralizes user authentication, access control, group policy management, and simplifying administration and enhancing the security. Number 28. Describe the difference between a physical server and a virtual server. A physical server is a tangible piece of hardware dedicated to running applications or services. In contrast, a virtual server is an instance created within a physical server using virtualization software. Multiple virtual servers can exist on a single physical server, allowing for resource efficiency and flexibility. Number 29. What is the purpose of a firewall and how does it enhance network security? A firewall acts as a barrier between a trusted internal network and an untrusted external network. It monitors and filters network traffic based on the predefined rules to prevent unauthorized access, malware, and other threats from reaching the internal network, and it has the security overall. Number 30. Explain the concept of RAID or Redundant Array of Independent Disk and its benefits. While RAID is a data storage technology that combines multiple feasible disks into a single logical unit to improve performance, fault tolerance, or both. It offers benefits such as increased data availability, fault recovery, and improved input-output performance through techniques like disk stripping, mirroring, and parity. Number 31. A user reports that they are unable to access a specific website, while others can. What steps would you take to troubleshoot this issue? Well, I would first verify the user's internet connectivity and check if other devices can access the website. Then I would inspect. DNS setting, clear the browser cache, disable browser extensions, and consider potential firewall or proxy servers restrictions that might be blocking access. Number 32. How would you troubleshoot a user's issue with an application that crashes upon launch without generating any error message? I would start by checking if the application and operating systems are up to date. Next, I would analyze even logs, perform a clean boot to identify conflicting software and consider running the application in compatibility mode or reinstalling it to resolve any potential corruption. Number 33. Describe your approach to diagnosing and resolving intermittent network connectivity issues. I would gather the information about the frequency, affected devices, and network components involved. I would then use network monitoring tools to capture and analyze network traffic, inspect log for anomalies, conduct packet captures, and perform tests on network hardware to identify and address potential cause of intermittent connectivity problems. Number 34. How would you assist a user who has accidentally deleted an entire folder containing critical files? Well, I would immediately advise the user to stop any further actions to prevent overwriting the deleted files. Then I would attempt to recover the files from backup. Utilize file recovery software if applicable or consider with data recovery expert if needed. Number 35. Explain the concept of remote desktop protocol and its potential security risk. Well, RDP is a protocol that allows a user to connect remotely to another computer or a server over a network and it enables remote control and access to the desktop of the remote system. However, if not properly secured, RDP can be vulnerable to attacks such as brute force attacks, credential theft, or exploitation of software vulnerabilities. Number 36. Explain the difference between a router and a switch in a computer network. A router is a network device that connects multiple networks together and routes data packets between them. A switch, on the other hand, is a network device that connects devices within a network and facilitates the communication between them at a local level. Number 37. How would you troubleshoot a user's issue with a printer that is not printing any document? Well, to troubleshoot a printer not printing, I would check the printer's physical connections, ensure it has sufficient paper and ink toner available, verify if the correct printer is selected, and then update or reinstall printer drivers, printer drivers if needed, and then test printing from different applications. Number 38. Describe the steps you would take to set up a new user account in an Active Directory environment. Well, to set up a new user account in an Active Directory environment, I would create a user account in the Active Directory, assign appropriate permissions and group memberships, set up a unique username and password, and configure any additional user-specific settings such as email or file access. Number 39. What are the key components of a disaster recovery plan and why are they important? Well, a disaster recovery plan typically includes components such as regular data backups, offsite storage, system redundancy, documented recovery procedures, and periodic testing. 
These components are important to ensure business continuity and minimize downtime in the event of disaster or critical system failure. Number 40. How would you troubleshoot a user's issue with a VPN connection that fails to establish? To troubleshoot a failed VPN connection, I would check the VPN client settings and configuration, verify network connectivity, ensure that the VPN server is operational, confirms that the correct authentication credentials are being used, and diagnose any potential firewall or routing issues. Number 41. Explain the concept of virtualization and its benefits in an IT infrastructure. While well, virtualization is the process of creating virtual instance of hardware, operating system, or application within a single physical machine, it provides benefits such as improved resource utilization, easier deployment, and management of multiple virtual environments, and increased flexibility in scaling resources. Number 42. What are the primary difference between POP3 and IMAP email protocols? Well, POP3 and IMAP are email protocols. POP3 downloads email from a mail server to the user's device and typically deletes the email from the server. IMAP, on the other hand, syncs the email between the mail server and the user's device, allowing multiple devices to access and manage the same set of emails messages. Number 43. Describe your approach to resolve software compatibility issues between different versions of an operating system. Well, to resolve this issue between different versions of operating system, I would consider applying software patches or updates verifying system requirements for the specific software, running the software in compatibility mode, or seeking assistance from the software vendor for any known compatibility issues. Number 44. How would you assist a user who is experiencing performance issue with a specific application on their computer? Well, I would check the system resource usage, ensure the application and systems are up to date, verify if the issue is specific to the application or affects the overall system. Troubleshooting the potential conflict with other applications or services and consider allocating additional system resources if needed. Number 45. Explain the concept of rate levels and discuss the pros and cons of different rate configuration. Well, rate levels define different configuration for data storage across multiple physical disks. Rate 0 offers increased performance but no redundancy. Rate 1 provides data mirroring for redundancy. Rate 5 uses stripping with distributed parity, offering a balance of performance and redundancy, and Rate 10 combines both stripping and mirroring for improved performance and redundancy. Number 46. How would you troubleshoot a user's issue with a sporadic system freeze or crash? I would review the event logs for the error messages, update device drivers and firmware, scan for malware, conduct hardware diagnostic, and monitor system resources usage to identify any patterns or triggers causing the freeze or crash. Number 47. Explain the process of troubleshooting a user's issue with a non-functional USB device. I would check the USB port for physical damage, test the device or another computer, verify driver compatibility, scan for malware, try different USB ports and consider reinstalling USB controllers or seeking specialized support for more complex issues. Number 48. How would you assist a user who cannot access shared network resources due to permission issues? Well, I would review the user access rights, check the shared resources permission, ensure the user is part of the correct user group, verify network connectivity, run network authentication test, and escalate to the system administrator if necessary. Number 49. Describe your approach to resolving an issue where a user's email client is unable to send or receive messages. Well, I would verify email server settings, check network connectivity, Review email account configuration, verify email client software version, clear cache and temporary file, disable antivirus or firewall temporarily, and consider reconfiguring or recreating the email profile. Number 50. How would you handle a user reporting slow network performance in a remote office location? Well, I would analyze network bandwidth usage, check network infrastructure, Optimize network setting, consider WAN optimization techniques, run network latency test, ensure proper cabling, and collaborate with network administrators to improve network performance. So these are the top 50 help desk interview questions and their answer. And at the end, let's head to ChatGPT and see the exact answers over there. So here if you see, these are the same questions that we have discussed in this video and you can see we have the same answer that we were discussing earlier. So all these answers have been generated by the chat GPT after we ask it different questions with different difficulty level. So that was all about this particular video and I hope now that you must have enjoyed watching this one. If that is the case, leave a like, subscribe the channel and I'll see you in the next video.